Arguing for the end of adult marijuana prohibition is easy because we have facts, science, reason, compassion, evidence, truth, and logic on our side. It is even easier when researchers catalog it all for us. Learn how to gather the facts on marijuana use, arrests, seizures, rehabs, drug tests, and more in this edition of Drug War Data Mining. Welcome back, everyone. 22 and a half after the hour. And today I'm reporting on a headline that I saw on LiveScience.com. Headline reads, half of teen young adult car crash deaths involve pot or alcohol. Okay, so let's take a look at some of this data. Uh, they say half of the teen and young adult drivers who die in car crashes are under the influence of either pot, alcohol, or both. And I think you'll probably guess what I have a problem with this in this opening statement, and that is the term under the influence. We'll get back to that in just a second. Uh, Roscoe's upset about something, excuse me there. Uh, the crash victims in this study uh, were over age 20 or were between the ages of 16 and 25. And they did this study based on data in the fatality analysis reporting system. This is the federal database of fatal car crashes. They focused on California, Connecticut, Hawaii, Illinois, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Rhode Island, Washington, and West Virginia. Uh, the reason they picked those eight states is these states routinely test their fatal car crash victims for drug and alcohol within an hour of the crash, uh, at least 85% of them. So there's some fairly consistent data here. I would note there that there's a big disparity in these states. Uh, California is a state with wide open access to marijuana. I know it's supposed to be medical, but just about anybody who wants to get marijuana in California uh, can find a way to get it if they really want to. Uh, compare that to a state like New Jersey, where the access to marijuana is extremely limited. We've got a Rhode Island in there that has the greatest use of marijuana in the country, and we're comparing it to like a West Virginia that has very low use of marijuana. So how much this data can be correlated amongst those eight states uh, when they have such differing uh, regimes for the regulation and accessibility to marijuana seems a little bit odd to me. It's also odd when you consider Washington state has legal marijuana for people age 21 and older, which I also think confounds things a little bit. The reason this is important Car crashes are the leading cause of death for 18 to 25 year olds in the United States and driving under the influence is a major cause of these accidents. And according to the research, the researchers found half of the young drivers, this is age 16 to 25, half of them or 50.3% of the young drivers who died were drunk or high at the time of their fatal crashes. In total, 36.8% tested positive for alcohol alone while 5.9% tested positive for marijuana alone, and 7.6% had been using both. Folks, this is where they made the huge mistake. They were not drunk or high at the time of their fatal crashes. Detecting whether they had alcohol in their system could be an indicator that they were impaired, that they were drunk at the time. But finding marijuana metabolites in their urine or blood or even finding active THC in the blood does not guarantee that the person was, quote, high at the time of their fatal crash. The metabolites from marijuana can show up in these tests for hours, days, even weeks in, consum in heavy consumers like me. All we're finding out here is that half of the people who died in a crash might be pot smokers. And in fact, actually, that's not even close because 36.8% of them were alcohol alone. The only ones that had marijuana were the 5.9% for marijuana and 7.6% for both. And by my math, that's what, 13.5%? So maybe one out of eight drivers between the ages of 16 and 25 was a pot smoker, which pretty much correlates to what we find in the marijuana use rates on a monthly basis of people between the ages of 16 and 25. We don't see a higher rate of marijuana positives amongst the people who are in the crashes than when we would find 
you know, random sampling of 16 to 25 year olds. This is just another continuation of misreporting and sloppy reporting of science when it comes to marijuana, its metabolites and its effects on impairment. The other thing these researchers like to say is that at age 21, the likelihood of finding alcohol alone in a crash victim system went up 14%. At the same time, the likelihood of finding pot alone went down 24%, but the chances of finding both alcohol and marijuana in the victims was 22% higher than in those under age 21. So what we're learning here is that once someone turns 21, they're more likely to be using legal substances for them. Alcohol legal at age 21, marijuana in Washington state legal at age 21. So there's no correlation here. There's nothing that this is telling us that somehow marijuana use goes up or down when it comes to whether or not it's legal or someone is age 21. What we find, especially in a place like California or Washington, when you're 21, you're able to use marijuana legally. It's no surprise you're going to find more people using marijuana. So this is some junk science, some flawed, sloppy reporting on marijuana metabolites, and it needs to be called out. I'll post this link in our chat room if you'd like to uh, log on there and add your comments of disapproval on their misreporting on marijuana science. This is uh, Stephanie Pappas uh, on LiveScience.com.